Lake Baikal is in East Siberia. People are drawn to it by its beauty, its energy, and its benevolent spirits. An old, old shaman called Chapchagay said, there is a place where you should sprinkle water and pray to the spirits, and they will guard you. You really get the impression that something supernatural is happening at Lake Baikal. But because I'm a physicist, I know it is impossible. A young scientist from Switzerland was attracted to this area where religion, nature and science intertwine. I try to see Baikal in its entirety. I didn't know what to expect from this place. It's not that I discover something new here, rather that I absorb everything that this place offers. Michael is more than 25 million years old. Josef Achtman is a little over 30. The Swiss scientist traveled to the banks of the oldest lake in the world by ultralight. This tiny aircraft weighs less than 500 kilos. At speeds of up to 170 kilometers per hour, it can fly at 3,000 meters, where from such altitudes, he can examine the bottom of the lake because of the clear waters and his four cameras fixed to the airframe. For Josef, it's not just a scientific endeavor, but a personal one. What winds of fate brought the young scientist to the Baikal region? It all began with a minor research trip. I arrived here quite by chance. I came up with the idea of a little experiment. In the world's oceans, there are a lot of organisms that, when exposed to light of a certain spectrum range, emit light of a different range. And I wondered if this was also the case with the lake. In short, Josef discovered luminescent crustaceans in Baikal's waters. Serious research of Baikal only began in the 17th century. Before that, legends traveled around Europe that Siberia was home to people with the heads of dogs. The first expedition destroyed all those myths. This land was inhabited by Buryats, Yavanks, and other Tungusic peoples. Lake Baikal was populated with sturgeon, omul whitefish, and a breed of seal with a photographic memory. This large Baikal seal has sharp eyesight. It swims close to the shore, examines the area closely, and if it's familiar, climbs up onto the stones to sunbathe. But if the outline of the land has changed, even a little, the seal will not risk getting close. To the seal, unknown places are a serious threat. Although Baikal seals' natural habitat is water, they don't live there constantly. They spend winters on ice, and in spring they breed. When baby seals grow a bit older, they start clambering onto ice. The Edenk word for the young seals is kumatkan. Mature seals like these can weigh up to 130 kilos and grow to one and a half meters in length. But on the whole, seals are docile creatures. They like peace and calm. Only man can scare the seals away from their natural habitat. The silence of the Siberian lake is broken by local shamans, addressing their dead forefathers and the spirit of Baikal itself. They pray for health, luck and good weather. Shamanism is one of the oldest of the world's faiths and is fervently observed at Baikal. Shamans are able to fall into a deep trance, which they believe lets them see into the future. Solomon realized his calling in a dream, but didn't believe it at first. 
There were no shamans in the Soviet Union. Everyone knows that. All my life my health was poor. It turned out I had a shaman's illness. In the end, I was completely exhausted and weighed only 47 kilos. Then one shaman, who's dead now, told me, Solomon, my brother, you have to go through a shamanic initiation or else you'll die. So in 18 days, I passed the ritual, and shortly after that, I started recovering. I regained my appetite and put on weight, and quite soon, I weighed 90 kilos again. This is the place where I was initiated. If a shaman likes someone, he will certainly ask the spirit of Baikal to be favorable to them, bringing sunshine and success. When Yosef arrived at Baikal, he dreamed of seeing the sun. Foul weather here hindered all scientific experiments. The lake has a strong character, and its climate is far from what Yosef is used to in Switzerland. When we first came to Lake Baikal, the weather was awful. It was raining heavily. Baikal was harsh. The first impression I had of Baikal, which is in fact true to this day, was the extreme weather. If it weren't for divine intervention, the young scientist wouldn't be able to work at Baikal. For several days, heavy downpours prevented Yosef even to leave his house. His research was on the verge of shutting down. He might just as well have packed up and headed home. The weather was terrible during our first week here. The rain was torrential. Then three lamas came and started to recite mantras for good weather. On the first day it was pouring, but on the second day the weather did improve. Spirits surround us. Every mound you pass has its master. We call him Aeon. In summer, in July, we pray to him and ask him to send us rain and protect our cattle and crops. There are special rites, like when we bring him the milk of a red cow or a white goat and some other gifts. In the Baikal region, Buddhism became especially popular in the 18th century, when monks from Mongolia and Tibet started settling in the area. They set up monasteries and temples the biggest of which is the Ivolgensky Datsan. People come from all over the world to this blessed land to meditate, to learn, or if they really want something, to pray to the gods. Believers bring different prayers to places emanating Buddhist energy. Women ask for well-being for their family. Men want prosperity and success in their work. Each ribbon on the trees here signifies someone's wish. Locals believe that a wish made here will come true, but only on condition that you make your wish in silence and that you don't ask for too much. After spending a few days at Baikal, Yosef started taking some of the superstitions seriously. Each morning he asks Baikal for good weather, and in the evening he's thankful for successful work. I didn't know what to expect from this place. It's not that I discover something new here, rather that I absorb everything this place offers. Not all scientists are as sensitive to local beliefs. While conducting studies on Baikal, some of them refuse to accept the existence of any supernatural power. According to them, it contradicts every law of nature. 
You really get an impression that something supernatural is happening at Lake Baikal. But being a physicist, I know it is impossible. It's just an intricate combination of exceptional natural factors which create a very comfortable atmosphere. In this respect, Lake Baikal is indeed unique and it needs protection. Nikolai Budnev's entire scientific life is connected with Baikal. First of all, he was born here. Later, he joined the local college, and for more than 30 years, he's been conducting scientific experiments in the area. Baikal is a region of high seismic activity, with earthquakes a common occurrence. For five years, the scientists' research has provided exact forecasts of earthquakes around Baikal. In 2008, this area suffered from a powerful earthquake. It was just as strong as the one that destroyed the Fukushima nuclear power station in Japan, which was washed away by a huge wave. Fortunately, here the earthquake couldn't produce such a tsunami, because Lake Baikal is too small. And in 2008, two days before the earthquake, we registered some fundamental changes in the electromagnetic field while monitoring the lake that we had never observed before in any other case. These are not his only scientific achievements. A neutrino detector has been dropped to a depth of one kilometer into the lake. Thanks to the pure, clear water of Baikal, the device is able to detect many mysteries, not just underwater, but also out in space. Discoveries of this kind are impossible in salty ocean water. The Baikal neutrino detector is designed to help us explore the history of our universe. Find out how it began what is happening to it now and what will happen to it in the future. It is only possible if you watch the streams of unique particles called neutrinos. They can provide us with the information on what was there when the universe began. Thousands of years ago, the region of Lake Baikal was flat. As legend has it, the Earth shuddered, creating a rift from which flames burst out, scorching everything around. People begged the gods to stop, screaming the words Bai and Gal, meaning fire and stop. The spirit of fire answered their prayer, and as time passed, water filled the rift. This is only the legend, but in reality, Lake Baikal was formed by earthquakes. There are a lot of theories, but they're all based on tectonic processes. This constantly widening fracture is the result of the movement of tectonic plates. All scientists agree that Baikal is an ocean in the making, because these tectonic plates are drifting apart, and this is constantly making Baikal larger and larger. Never has a lake existed for as long as Baikal. Lakes usually last for no more than 15,000 years. After that, they simply dry out, and that's been the case for millions of years. This lake, though, was formed long before human history began. Remarkably, the water content has undergone almost no changes at all. The lake is very deep, and the water is clear and saturated with oxygen down to the deepest parts. The lake is ancient, and yet it has never changed. A land of science, discoveries and unique nature, seemingly frozen in time. At Baikal, the present lives side by side with the spirits of the past. Just like the lake itself, locals preserve their own mysteries and traditions. I treat local folklore, legends and rituals with great respect. 
I'm convinced that they are absolutely necessary here. These rites all date back many more years than any of these scientific research projects. Baikal extends for 630 kilometers, covering an area the size of some countries like Belgium or the Netherlands. Everybody finds a place in the vast area of Baikal. Christians, Buddhists, shamans, and old believers of the Russian Orthodox Church. They've lived here for more than 300 years. They cross themselves with two fingers and reject modern orthodoxy. Their faith and rituals have remained untouched throughout all these centuries. Their villages have their own unique design. Each house is painted in rich summer colors. Old believers' clothing has always been famous for its brightness and neatness, as well as embroidered hats and sarafans. If a girl wears white ribbons, it means she is a bride from a well-off family, and her father has prepared everything for her to be beautiful at the wedding. The songs of our ancestors that we sing are mostly sad because they had a hard life and a lot of work. We work hard too and don't have time to lie on the sofa. There are weeds in the garden that need pulling out or berries that need picking. And aside from that, there is always cleaning to be done. Every day, old believers thank God for the sun and their health. They firmly believe that places around Baikal are sacred. Any difficulties can be endured with God's help, even the weather. There is a holy mountain nearby. On Ascension Day, elderly women go there and pray to God to send rain and bless the crops. From time to time, scientists will admit that even though they don't believe in spirits, they do listen to the local legends. We strictly observe all the traditions that the local population has had here for more than a thousand years. And I truly believe it helps, because in the 33 years that we've been working at Lake Baikal, we haven't had a single accident. In return for respect, Baikal may be generous and endow the reverend with rewards. Josef, the scientist from Switzerland, has appealed to the lake and it's paid off. The weather has improved, allowing the scientist to work. Josef is studying on the banks of Silenga, the biggest river flowing into Baikal, providing around 50% of its river water. Its delta is a powerful filter that cleans everything before it gets into the lake. We've gathered some data this year and will continue working next year. These 3D models we've made will give us an insight into how the riverbeds in the estuary of the Selanga River have changed. The estuary is constantly developing and changing. This is very important and extremely difficult to explore. The cool, deep waters of Baikal, rich with oxygen, are constantly circulating from the bottom up. That's how the lake keeps itself clean. Water can safely be drunk straight from Baikal. 
I believe Lake Baikal is a real treasure for mankind, and not only as a practically inexhaustible source of drinking water, which still remains clear. It's rather that here you truly feel the effect that this lake, with its unique nature and atmosphere, has on your emotional state. Baikal, through its beauty, individuality and energy, can reconcile science with man's belief in supernatural powers. Scientists might look for answers to any question, but it doesn't mean that everything will be explained one day. That's a completely different approach. The goals of science differ from those of folklore. You can't escape these legends, like the fishermen, who carry out their rituals every time before they leave harbour. Burhan is a Buryat god that needs to be placated. You should treat him to a little wine, or even if you feel like it, drink some yourself. Oh, there's one. Pull it out. I've never seen anything like this before. So many in just one net. I guess about 50 or 60. You can tell by the weight. Local fishermen are firmly convinced that Baikal will give a good catch when people treat it with respect. Baikal is not only the oldest, but it's also the deepest lake in the world, with a depth of 1,642 meters. Somewhere on the lake bed lie the treasures of the Russian Empire. One legend has it that in the times of the Civil War in Russia at the beginning of the 20th century, a ship carrying the gold reserves of the Russian Empire sank somewhere in this area. No one has found these treasures yet, Attempts are still being made to this day. Large expeditions are organized, cutting-edge technology is used, and various maps are examined. Everything possible is being done to find the sunken gold. But no one has been lucky so far. Baikal continues to play hide-and-seek with man. The story about gold is quite a popular one. We had clear directions and decided to have a go at it. And during that one submersion, we had about 12 accidents that we had never had before. At first the weather was fine and the forecast was good, but once we had reached the spot, the weather changed. Then it turned out that we had somehow lost the directions we had specially printed out. Once we had reached the bottom, our sonar broke down. And to top it off, when we were rising from the bottom, the motorboat that was to pick us up ran into our vessel and was damaged. So I understood then that we were on the right track to finding this gold, but Baikal was resolved to keep it. Yosef isn't too eager to leave, but his wife and two young daughters are waiting for him at home. So many things are still to be done, and so much about Baikal still needs to be unraveled. People warned me that once I came to Lake Baikal, my life would change completely. I would fall in love with it and would long to come back. I never thought that this place would really affect me so deeply. The period I spent here has been one of the most interesting and dynamic stages of my life. And I will certainly look for an opportunity to return to Lake Baikal.